Welcome. My name is Dr. Stephen Herod and I am going to demonstrate for you solving a transportation problem in Excel. The transportation problem is a linear programming problem. It's of the class of linear programming problem. This particular problem uh, involves transporting students to school on bus routes. And in this case, the goal of this problem is minimizing our cost. And our cost here is measured as the total student mileage that we've accumulated, this total student bus mileage traveled. Our control, the things that we control in this problem, are the student assignments from home district to school district. That gives us 15 variables in this particular problem because we have five home districts and three destination schools that we're concerned about. And each of these variables is the count of the number of students that we're moving on each route, on each route uh, from a particular home district to a particular school location. Now we have some limits to be concerned about because of course in any linear programming problem we have three things we have to quantify. We've already got our goal, we have our control, and we have our limits. Now our limits here are first of all that each school building has a capacity of 900 students. And secondly, the other limit is that we need to ensure that we actually serve all of the students. We can't leave any students at home and uh, we can't have students magically appear from somewhere else. The exact number of students served in each district has to equal the population that we have. So let's go ahead and let's uh, start out with a blank worksheet. And let me show you how we're going to set up this transportation problem. First of all, let's go ahead and just set up some columns and rows here. Let's show where we're coming from. And we have five home districts. And we're just going to label them with letters here. And we are going to three potential destination districts. And I started to label that. Let me finish that label at the top. So two. And I, of course, I used, you may have noticed, I used, uh, I selected three cells and then I, uh, I merged them together to, for cosmetic reasons mainly. I just wanted to make it look attractive. Uh, so I have uh, from A, B, C, D, E to B, C, and E. And now I'm going to draw the intersection here. Let's make that attractive too. Why don't we? So there's our intersection. So these are our decision variables right here. These are our decision variables, <coughs> and uh, uh, each one of these represents the quantity of students moving from one origin to one destination. And uh, let's name these cells. This will be handy for our equation writing later on. So we want to name these cells, so let's select all of the cells, our decision cells. And then you go up here in the name box, and well, look at that. It just popped up, name box. So let's name that. Let's call this our, our um, decision. This is our decision. OK. So these are our decisions right here. So now I want to make a copy of this, because I now want to record on this screen. Now you can't see me. Well, maybe you can if I do this. Let's do this. Let's use this uh, here, right there. Copy. There you go. I was going to do it with the key commands, but I'm going to show you with the mouse. Copy. So I've just copied that. Let's make a copy of that down here. Uh, Right about, right about here is good, right there. OK, so we made a copy of that down there. And I'm going to quickly scoot down and put in, let's put in the costs for these routes. Now, in this case, we're measuring cost in terms of mileage. So let's put in these miles. It's uh, 5 and 8 and 6 and then uh, 0 and 4 and 12. And, and why, you might ask, why is that zero? Well, uh, in this particular word problem, this particular problem example, uh, the students who are going from the home district to the school located in their same home district, they're walking. So they're not on the bus, so they don't have a cost because they don't take the bus. So, and here we go, some more entries, four and zero and a seven. And then let's go down here, we've got a seven and a 2, and a 5. And then down here, we've got a 12, and a 7, 
and a zero again because we're once again these are walkers right here so that's a walker so there's no bus for him all right so there's our mileages those are our mileages from origin to destination here in this transportation problem so let's scoot back up here and get back to the working part so we now have entered actually what we control and down here we've entered essentially the cost of what we control so we now can already in fact go ahead and enter the objective value of this system so the objective value right over here let's pretty it up a little bit a little yellow there the objective value now is going to be some product times the decisions or singular decision singular no s on the end uh, and times the cost here's our cost right there and we're done so now I've got the objective value it's zero right now because we have no entries yet but if I do some tests put in a number here and there you go it works the equation works so that's that's good now we need to put in we need to put in our limits We need to put our constraints in on this problem now this is a transportation problem so it's actually really easy to structure our constraints on this spreadsheet with a minimum amount of work the first constraint we had earlier was well all the students have to absolutely have to absolutely go to school so we have a limit and those limits are there's 700 students in this district there are 500 students in this district there are 100 students in this district and there are 800 in this district and there are 400 in this district and all of these have to go to school now the number that we actually decide to take to school from each of these districts is the sum of these rows right here so the decisions I make on this row B right here the sum of these decisions represents how many students I take out of this home district and bring to school so we want to first calculate how many we make based on our decisions so this the the sum of that row is the decision that we make so we'll sum that row and right now it's nothing because I have nothing entered yet so there we go so those are all zeros did you see what I just did let me do that again watch this okay I'd entered my equation and I actually want that same equation for each of those rows I don't have to retype it again what I do is I just highlight that equation and click and drag at the corner here and Excel is going to copy that equation into those empty cells a lot of easy work done there so I don't have to retype that all over again so these constraints are that the sum of the students I move from this district has to equal this number so these are all equalities and I'm gonna put in equal signs right here these are just cosmetic these are just a reminder to me that that's the constraint I want to enforce these are not actually going to do anything on the spreadsheet they're just cosmetic okay now the other limits we had are that there are only capacity for 900 students at each school so each one of these schools can only take 900 students that means that the sum of the students that we put into that school and we're gonna do the same thing again here there's the sum of the students that we decide to put in that school and we're gonna click and drag to copy it over again look at that the sum of those students has to be less than or equal to that limit right there whatever number of students we put into school B has to be total less than or equal to 900 right there so we've got those equations in and surprise surprise the reason this formulation and this structure in the spreadsheet is uh, so desirable is because we're done already we're already done very minimal amount of typing very simple structure and we have already got this transportation problem formulated and it's time to solve it so we want to solve this we're going to use the solver tool in Excel in this version of Excel 2007 that tool is located under the data menu right there and it's over there on the right where it says solver now it's possible that it hasn't been installed on your software yet so if it's not installed yet what you do is you go up here office button go down to Excel options 
go to add-ins may take a minute you gotta wait just give it a minute here it comes okay and then at the bottom it says manage Excel add-ins and you select go and here's your list of add-ins and there's the solver and if you don't see it on your software it's probably because this box is not checked yet so you want to check this box so you check that box and you're done and it should maybe after a minute of installation show up so let's go ahead get back to where we were now let's go ahead and solve this solver solve okay here's our solver dialog all right now it's a little bit of uh, technical language on here uh, unique to solver unique to this software package uh, it says set target cell that is solvers uh, definition of the objective value so you want to highlight our objective value to make sure that the reference for that cell shows up under set target cell now this is a minimization problem we want to minimize this this objective value so you want to select minimization right there and we're going to make this objective by changing the decision variables which in this software are called changing cells which we have named decision and let's put our constraints in down here add our constraints first set of constraints we have these guys right here equal to this guy like that now I could go through and put one two three four five five of these in one at a time in here little tip little trick Solver lets you put in multiple at the same time if they all have the same relationship. So watch this. Instead of just putting in one, these all are the same. They all are equalities. So I'm going to click and drag. We're going to put all five in at the same time. Equals. Here we go. Put in all five at the same time. Because they all have the same equality relationship, so that is allowed. That's okay. So that's one set we've put in. We're going to add some more now. Hit the Add button again. Look over here. And surprise, surprise, look, they all have the same relationship. And uh, so we can do this again. We can copy these over again. So let's, I don't want to do that. Let's delete that out. So we want to do all three of these less than or equal to all three of these. And that is our. Uh, supply constraint so to speak that is our capacity constraint at the uh, schools so we're done that's all we're done we say okay so we've got our objective value we're minimizing that our decision variables are here under changing cells we've named it we named that cell range earlier and uh, we have our constraints in finally remember this is a linear program so we need to set two options on here first of all we need to set assume linear model and secondly, we need to set assume non-negative right there. Those are two very important settings, that one and that one. Very important. OK, set those, and we're done. We're ready to go. Here we go, and solve. And there you go. And you know it's worked because uh, right here it says solver found a solution. It says all constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. And you say, yes, I want to keep that solution. So we say, OK, and here is the solution. So it has found that for these students, there will be a total of 5,400 miles, 5,400 student miles of travel. And this is the student assignments right here. So 400 students are going to take the bus from A to B. 500 students are going to walk from B to B in their own district. 100 students are going to walk in District C. 400 students are going to walk in District E. 800 students are going to take the bus from D to C. And 300 students are going to take the bus from A to E. So that's it. We're done here. This is the transportation model structured on an Excel spreadsheet. We've demonstrated how to solve it. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. See you again now.